What's it like to work with an agency to bring their creative vision to life with virtual production? Today, I have an incredibly special guest to talk about how we did exactly that. Today we have John Wagner, the senior brand strategist for May Create, here with us on the debrief. Welcome, John. We're so excited to have you join us. Thanks, Andre. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we're uh, today. John works with May Create. May Create is a full service agency, and we've worked together on some projects where we, the studio, has been filming for some of your clients. And today we're going to break down uh, a conversation. Uh, of all the different things we've learned from doing Biltwell Bank. So it's a bank client that came in. They wanted to do a bunch of different testimonials from their customers to kind of showcase their customers. So we're showcasing May Create, showcasing Biltwell, showcasing their customers. I mean, it's just the love is really spreading around on this one. Yeah, this is a cool shoot. So it's a full Unreal set that we'll be talking through today. It's a lot of different people with various experience on camera. It's working together with an agency and how we can both work and support each other. I'm super pumped about this one. I think we're gonna learn a lot together. So John, officially welcome uh, to The Debrief. Well, thanks, Andre. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about May Create. Uh, May Create is a independent advertising agency. We're full service. We do everything from traditional media, free over the air, TV and radio and outdoor to print to a lot of digital. Um, but I think what's cool about us is independent for 20 years, debt free, and we really align ourselves with our clients goals, which is not winning awards as an agency. It's about generating qualified leads and helping them grow their business through brand powered work. Yeah, that's awesome. And so as we kind of work through this, this was a, a bank, you guys actually rebranded its name to built well. Um, tell us just, I mean, you know, this isn't really our world, but give us kind of a sense of what does it take to rebrand a bank, an old established bank? Tell us just kind of give us a brief insight into a world that probably none of us ever think about. Yeah, I think rebranding is probably, it's driven by something. Uh, Biltwell Bank was first volunteer bank here in Chattanooga, and they were buying a Georgia-based bank. And so their current name, first volunteer bank, wouldn't play well in Georgia. So they decided to rebrand. Um, what was, I think, so wise about Patty Steele and their leadership team is they realized that it couldn't be arbitrary. It wasn't just about a name. It needed to come from someplace. So we took them through our brand discovery process and really identified their position in the marketplace. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he's a he's a bookseller online. I don't know if you've heard <laughs> yeah, of him. But Jeff Maybe. is uh, famously quoted as saying, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's really position. And we work really, really hard for clients to help them define a simple, compelling, repeatable, durable position that they can own in the marketplace. Um, we're all busy people. We can't re, you know, you just can only be one thing to your customers a lot of times. And so we want to make sure it's the right thing. Um, so they were, that's what drove the rebrand. We took them through our brand platform process. Out of that, what came out was the key repeated phrase was soundness, that they care more about your financial health than their short-term gains on getting a loan or any of mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah. And so the name Biltwell came right out of that process. That's awesome. And so, and how, just curious, like how long did that whole thing take? I'm, I'm just always fascinated it's, by that. It was about uh, 90 days to okay. go from discovery to, to rename. Amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Hey, that's cool. What, one interjection I want to make is because John, we have a ton of people who watch this who definitely are not from Tennessee. So they were first volunteer. That's what you said. Yeah. Okay. So first volunteer, Tennessee is the volunteer state. If you don't know that that's right. a bunch of people wearing orange, screaming that uh, we'll get to you <laughs> very quick, but they bought a North Georgia bank here in Chattanooga. We're not far from North Georgia. So I just wanted to say like the, the volunteer thing would not work there. So that's right. I see how important the rebrand is for them. You know, those Georgia people never volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> They've never volunteered for anything. Yeah, that's, that's great that's context, hilarious. Jay. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, so you guys picked us, which we are so thankful for. And in fact, we did this We've done this twice now mm -hmm. for this bank over a period of of two years, I guess, roughly. Like so, a, about a year in between each one of these. 
so obviously something worked for them to come back, right? So they they came to us. Yeah. Uh, we filmed a series of commercials and then a year, whatever. I don't know the timeline, but later they came back a second time. Why, why come back? What was it that helped this succeed? Oh, I think it's pretty simple. It worked. Um, yeah. So, you know, built well in some levels, we're tracking new customers to convert that create appointments that open accounts or do commercial loans or personal loans. But the number one thing they track is impressions in the marketplace. Are they keeping their brand awareness, flying at you know, 50,000 feet so that they're top of mind? Right. Switching banks is a long-term process. You have to disentangle your current bank. Mm. You've got to start up. It's an 18-month process. And so we have to maintain a brand awareness coverage. And that's what matters to them. And when uh, leadership in the bank gets stopped at the airport and someone said, hey, I saw your, saw your TV. Um, working with you guys, we were also able to produce our outdoor work the same day to keep the same uh, art direction through the campaign. So the stuff that we show on billboards for them here in the marketplace and all throughout the Southeast is the same stuff we're showing on broadcast TV and radio, is the same stuff we're showing on display ads. All that uh, builds their brand and gives their leadership team exactly what they want, which is awareness and recognition. Hey, uh, one one thing I want to say, John, this was a cool part for me. I can't remember if I told you this or not, but uh, I was watching the national championship, the college football national championship yeah. with some friends, and uh, I scared everybody because I went, all right, everybody shut up. <laughs> and they were like, why? And I pulled my phone out and I was like, because I edited this. <laughs> So that was my so that was my very first time uh, ever seeing like something that I'd like had my hands on in the timeline when you and I worked on the yeah. first the original session yeah. that you guys came. So yeah. that was a really cool part for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, cool, a bank commercial, Jay." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey. banking. Yeah. yeah, real awesome. Well, let's <laughs> kind of show a little bit of behind the scenes. So let's let's kind of transition from that and talk. Thanks for sharing some of that. Let's talk a little bit about this shoot. Let's see what it looked like. Uh, why don't why don't, uh, I don't know, Isaac looks like you're th scrolling through some stuff on Pro Presenter. So much. This might be the most B-roll day of the studio ever. <laughs> okay. I have exported, this isn't even all of them, I exported over 170 <laughs> clips. So there's oh a lot goodness. to scroll through. <laughs> well, give us anything. <laughs> yep, yep. So there's some stuff. <laughs> look at that guy. Look at that guy. Yeah. Look at them talking. Look at these people talking. There it is. Oh, look at those guys. It was chilly. When I own one chilly. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. What, what did the What did the set look like? Give us a. Give yeah. Me, let me let me get on to it's here. Here's a finalized you. ad. Here's a whole I'm edited. I see. There you go. I was waiting for you to do that. <laughs> that voice. Hello. Yes. I got to. I actually saw Tyler uh, not uh, like a few weeks back, John, and, yeah. and he remembered me. That was really so. Guy. So, what are the goals of these ads here, right? So, uh, we're seeing this right now. So, what's what's happening in this advertisement, basically? Uh, you know, psychologically, um, testimonials are proof source, right? So, if I don't know anything about Biltwell Bank, but I see a bunch of people step forward and say they bank with Biltwell, then that makes me think that it's a credible option in the marketplace. Mm. Uh, what we tried to do with this campaign was lean into things that were unique to Biltwell Bank. So as we unpack these stories from each of these customers, we tried to find the recurring theme that was true about Biltwell that we use elsewhere. So yeah, testimonials are a great way to get, um, to borrow other people's I guess their goodwill and uh, make you consider their bank. Well, hey, I got a really good question that would spin off of that specific subject. So, if these, so these are actual clients of the bank, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in your line of work and what we do, we we both have a, a little bit uh, difference in uh, what we would call talent. Um, so, in the in the traditional world, talent means. Hey, I'm a guy who's showing up, an actor who's paid. I know my lines. I'm ready to deliver. Let's make the production. Um, but with us, it kind of can get blurred, and uh, talent can sometimes mean somebody who's never been on camera before. Yeah. So what is your strategy, which happened here during the shoot. Mm -hmm. So what is your strategy to sort of handle? I, I sort of fumble through this myself sometimes. What's your strategy on handling first-time talent and helping them get the best take that they can? I think it's just good communication, really. It starts there. And I think that what Socially You does um, is you guys make people feel comfortable. And we all perform our best when we're comfortable and when we don't feel like we're going to screw up or look like an idiot. And you guys do a great job of making them feel 
comfortable, at home, welcomed, embraced, celebrated. I mean, your process here is really pretty amazing. Uh, you know, the, I think at our level, great production is the table stakes. But can you get there and the client not hate the agency, the yeah. agency not uh, tick off a bunch of really good people in the community trying to get them to say a line they want them to say? Um, so I think it's important to start there. The next thing I think is just to relate to people. Um, you guys set the stage for a, for a really comfortable environment and then it's our job to just try and pull the story out of them. Sure. The more pre-production we can get, mm -hmm. like knowing why they bank, what services they use with the bank, who they bank with at the bank, all that stuff in pre-production helps us get a running start on the story. But with these spots for Biltwell in particular, there was not a lot of pre-production done right, right. ahead of time. And so we showed up pretty much just uh, like shooting a documentary in some ways. We knew what we were trying to achieve. We had kind of like a, like script buckets for talking points, trying to keep it within that, you know, uh, 20 seconds of audio in a 30 second spot. Right. So we don't overwhelm people. But as you guys saw, the process here was very iterative. And our first two, well, our first setup of the day was very arduous yeah. as we were figuring out how to make this work. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. So dealing with some talent, like, uh, so one specific example I wanted to talk about and some changes that we made, which is something that we worked with you on was whenever we had the two doctors mm -hmm. um, who had their practice, who they did, yeah. uh, they did their piece for, they had, uh, they did what we talk about a lot here is uh, people who come in to talk on teleprompter and they wrote for reading and but not for speaking so there was just some longer words and a little bit more fluff kind of involved with that but we had a time uh getting things dialed in because we went from like two people on set to three two chairs one chair and a couch yeah. and with the ultimate and with the green screen sometimes that can take a little bit longer to sort of dial in when you're making those changes and mm -hmm. changes in lighting et cetera, et cetera. um but I noticed that they were practicing their lines like really fast to try and really cut down on that time. And then they were also kind of doing it a lot because we were sort of taking a long time. What what would you do like normally to help with like fatigue in a situation like that when you have people who aren't so used to being on camera like we were discussing before? Like, is there is there a way that you should attack that uh, like maybe not practicing and hanging out and talking about something different or anything like that, that, you know, off the top of your head. Yeah. Great, great point. So uh, unlike a typical interview or a documentary where it, you just want their words, um, when you're shooting for commercial, you're trying to get a specific point across when you do that, then you walk in with the script or script notes. Um, and what we talk about is always whenever you write, and I think it applies actually to print as well, write for verbal, you know, read all of your writing out loud, uh, try your best to understand who you're talking to on the set and get it in their words. So like in our pre-production during makeup with them, we would sit down and talk with them and try and capture their actual words in the script notes to use as prompts. Right, right. Right. Because I would see you, that yeah. was that was another question I had that I would fold on to this, but you're bringing it. I would see you like kind of this B-roll right here. Yeah. You would be sitting in there and discussing with them. So are you gauging what works and what doesn't or what hits better or yeah i'm trying to what i'm trying to do is find a way in the client's own words to say what the bank wants to repeat in the marketplace so i mm -hmm. don't want to contrive something and i don't want to um, put words in their mouth i want to use their words and so i'm i'm asking them about specific things that the bank does that i that i've learned now are in their story that are brand centric but are true to in their own language i think um so that's that's a trick, right? When you're yeah, doing all yeah. this the day of the shoot, but <laughs> yeah. we all know, uh, right. you know, as production <laughs> professionals, we all know that um, you try to minimize the variables so that you can uh, create good stuff on the fly. A lot of times, you know, we we shoot a lot of places where we we thought we have a location, and then the next thing you know, they're running someone into ER, and we have to pull all our lights out in ten minutes so they can get a patient in, and there sh there goes two hours of lighting. Yeah. So I think you guys do great at, at managing the variables that can happen uh, so that we can work with people. Ultimately, it's about getting people recorded and telling the story as believably as possible. I love how you uh, use that time in makeup, though, because that's a part where they're kind of 
their uh their defenses are down because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're already vulnerable because yeah. someone else is touching their face and kind of messing with them and whatever yeah. so they've kind of already reduced some of the posturing that yeah. we have just as humans you know i think it's a great place to kind of reach in and they're also not only being vulnerable but they're being very cared for right yeah. so it's like someone is already very much caring for them in that moment it's a caring experience it's not and it's a very intimate experience. And so I think that's a great time yeah. uh, to be able to, you know, we were able to work the timing of the day out so that as we finished client number one, client number two is kind of getting settled, but they're just now getting into makeup as you kind of are coming off of client number one and you're able to sit there and talk to them. So I think obviously the more pre production you can have the more you know you know what you're going to get when you come that doesn't always mean it's better but you're going to know but i do think there's also an element of keeping it fresh and real and it's just like hey here's what it is and i think there's there's some value in that too i also uh wanted to mention that we had ifb um for you which sometimes you would put in your ear and sometimes (laughs) not right well i mean because sometimes you're just really focused and you don't need other input i'm just a pain in the butt (laughs) (laughs) no no but i'm not saying like that but like you have you have the chance to like both listen or not Uh, to it uh, because I saw it kind of out of your ear in one of those clips Uh, but that was super helpful too because if there was something over here in the control room side while you're uh, because you you really want to be intimate and in there like I noticed a lot of the shots as we were watching the b-rolls and I noticed this as you were doing it you'll really crouch down and like be there talking to the person like very much at eye level kind of Mm -hmm. deal um, unlike Jay, who just stares at this mic all I do. <laughs> on this B-roll clip that we're playing right now. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's just like there's Jay looking <laughs> just straight saying. ahead. Actually, there's 180 of these clips. OK, I got a lot to click through. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so uh, but but, uh, you know, what I was always impressed with was how much you want to be present and be fully immersed with them, where sometimes some of. Yeah, look at that. Look at that shot of him just getting down. Look at that one knee you're you took one a knee, knee one shirt yeah took a knee one shirt oh, one. points deducted for not having the ifb but <laughs> i know yeah, he's yeah, holding yeah. his he's like i don't need whatever those guys are trying to tell <laughs> i was me. about to use i was about to <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but i think you know sometimes especially during our production we spend most of our time over here mm-hmm. uh in the control room because there's so many things to click on and do dads to push and look and listen to. But there is also the human element that I was noticing from what you were doing of like, man, he is just going in there and just being there present with them. And there's an assurance there. Yeah. It's a care. It feels very cared for. Mm-hmm. Um, what, how, tell me just, and, and this could just be instinct, but what made you think like, I'm going to be sitting in the room with them. It may be like so obvious. You're like, I don't know why you're asking that, but <laughs> what I'm a director, <laughs> you're like, I know. but, but why, what made you think that's where I want my position to be instead of outside the room, I guess. Well, well great. I mean, so again, going back to the, uh, the makeup situation, what we're trying to do is reduce risk for them. Right. So we want them to feel like they're going to succeed. And so like the reason why, you know, we, Jay asked questions like, what can you do with like maybe non-professional talent? They're professionals in their sphere. Sure. They're not just professionals Camera. in our sphere, mm-hmm. you know? So um, one thing that we do is we shoot rehearsals, right? We shoot in between takes. We we do everything we can do to make them feel like the risk isn't very high. And um, that's also, I think, a great thing. So I grew up shooting 35 millimeter and you're counting feet, you know, mm. because... Yeah. You've got Which fun fact is why it's called footage. Yeah, that's right. You're <laughs> yeah, and you're paying by the foot and you're telecining by the foot and you're editing, you know, it's just it's very expensive. So this is a great way. And I think the way you guys are set up, you guys really understand that um you understand how to help people feel comfortable. So number one. Uh number two, the reason that I went in with them is that, you know, my background was being on set with people. Um, and like, you know, like on set, you're with the people. And we used to set up video villages on set. Mm-hmm. And it's typically where the producer and maybe the agency would sit and watch what's going on. But it's one step removed from what's actually happening. And I always envied my director of photography friends because they were right there. They were always right there. Mm. And so um, I envied the guys that could shoot and direct at the same time. Mm. And I learned a lot shooting with great directors of photography. Um, 
the, ultimately it's about getting that connection. And for a non-professional talent to look down the barrel of a big piece of glass is intimidating and it feels impersonal. And if what I'm trying to do is help them kind of get out of the idea that they've got, you know, $8 million worth of lighting and camera equipment around them. And they're sitting in a studio right. and I just got to put a human element back in front of them. 7.5 million. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> John, you mentioned something about um, kind of takes and how we'd roll during rehearsals and stuff like that. So Jay, you realized you had a problem, which is that John would ask you, how long was that? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, so with, with what we, don't always do we, we're not always shooting up with the sometimes we have a time limit for different things but this has a very strict uh time that we had to stick to and so yeah after each take john they would they would practice and grow go through the spiel and then you would be like so how long did that take and i'm like okay well my hyperdeck says that this is a three minute and 40 second clip i think i hit a uh, record at two minutes you know and i'm like trying to do math and isaac is like hey can i uh can i help you with that and I was like, what do you got? And he was like, how about I give you a timer with a start, stop, and reset button mm -hmm. that I could then clear and use every single time. And, oh, and by the way, the start screen stops red and nice. reset is oh, yellow or that orange. Almost focus. So oh, there. It's there. It's there. Oh, yeah. Slow mo. Slow mo. So it, that, that was a, uh, uh, I know it's easy and I'll let you talk about it really, Isaac, because you made it. But mm -hmm. from, from my experience, for John needing that information, and then me being like, uh, and then you being like, and I got it. Here you go. Here's a perfect well, timer color coded. For yeah. And this stems from an argument you and I had <laughs> on a debrief. Yes, it is. We'll have to go find that episode. But um, where our hyperdeck timer, the whole thing crashed. And we're like, we have no idea how long we've been rolling. None of the things are working. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I should find a way to kind of build in a timer. So I found the stopwatch module that's in Companion. And I used that to kind of build this record timer that was within Companion separate from our pro presenter record timer and the hyperdeck record timer. Well, then the next thing that I realized is you can add a module as many times as you want in Companion. And so uh, when he's doing this, I'm like, well, I'll just add the stopwatch module again and just build start, stop, reset. And sure, Jay could have used his phone, you know, but now this is integrated into <laughs> yeah. the system. It's always there. It's always running. There's no notifications mm -hmm. that show up on a stream. Deck, well, what's you know? pretty cool about it now is the one of my favorite things that we do is like we grow and learn. And then when we create processes, we continue to use them. So now there are times where like I just I do need to have like off the top of my head, maybe how long something is taking. And so that is still on my stream deck and i can still hit those uh buttons and do a timer so. yeah it just lives there yeah it just lives there now it's just one of the assets so yep. it's really cool and i had a thought also while we were doing this production i've been thinking a lot about like okay well what do we do that's different what's cool about green screen and you know i think if we look like at the set for this one mm -hmm. right you can probably understand there's a way to build this physically Right. It's it's colored blocks of things. But there's two things I've realized. Number one, that take time, um, which, you know, can can happen, but it, it takes an amount of time to build up. But number two is we get to be exactly on brand. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those colors is the hex code that someone at may create has sent our way of here are the hex codes to use for this. So this is precisely on brand for them you know you you're not worried about painting a, a physical pillar right. that we built in the background and then, hey, what if that light, what if we're shooting at 5600 and 5600 bounces and makes it look different and weird and what? Yeah. How did this from a, from an agency standpoint, John, how did this feel what you thought you were going to get and what you actually got? Like, how did we compare, uh, of pre our pitch to you versus the actual final product? How close was it? Uh, it was better. It was better. I mean, I think when we came in, we had an idea. We started off with the, um, so uh, our senior art director, uh, Morgan Tanksley, and our executive creative director, Brian May, had come up with this look for Biltwell Bank, and we want to use it everywhere. And so then when we brought it into production, we brought the idea of Netflix's um, great, uh, mm -hmm. that effect that they use over their right. visual ID. And we came in here and you guys ran with it and actually you took it farther. Um, on some of the shots, you can see where it's actually interacting with the different focal lengths of the mm -hmm. camera, mm -hmm. which is really what we wanted. And um, just to plug a little sustainability here, you know, 
us old timers, we grew up in a day when you'd go into the back of a studio and you'd see a storage room full of discarded and forgotten sets. Right. And, um, you know, there's nothing to tear down here. There's nothing to store. There's nothing to uh, recycle. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I just think this is probably, oh, man, it's just such a sweet way to do this work. How do, how do you think the bank experience was so we had senior executives from the bank here what what did they tell you anything afterwards oh, yeah. of what and what was that like yeah i mean uh i i had to put them on mute after a few days <laughs> but that was great and did you That's see all that good. what did they do this and um no they uh i think they were blown away that there's a resource like this mm. in the southeast uh, without going down to Turner or CNN or something like that, much less being in Chattanooga. I mean, you guys are, I don't say this because you're friends. I say this because um, you guys are just top drawer. I mean, you guys yes, can take take vision and amplify it. You can refine it. We actually took some of the stuff you did and we took it back into our other campaign work. So mm. I think it's very collaborative. And I think the, the fact that you guys not only uh, mitigate... Um, complexity and manage all the variables but like like the idea that isaac and jay worked on with the start and stop you guys are making continual improvements during the shoot and and what happens at the end of the day like for a client a brand an agency a director they come in here they don't have to worry about those eight million little things that are going on and they can focus on ultimately the people yeah it's all about the people that are on camera and whether you're doing your long form work your educational work um, or commercial work, it's ultimately about what you get on the screen, the person on the screen. Yeah, And you guys just do such a great job of making everything, it's so important, but you make it fit its space mm. so that it doesn't rule. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's cool that you mentioned that because in the example of the timer, so that timer is critical because this is a commercial that will air on television, has a very specific timing that it has to land. And it's impromptu scripting. So we got to like match an interview with a strict time constraint. But also I think the point that you just mentioned of like what we have, what I'm thankful for the team of being willing to do is constantly iterate, even in the midst of a production, like we're constantly trying to tweak. And I think what I'm watching us as a company, hopefully we're continuing to grow. And from my perspective, as we continue to grow, what I'm seeing is like, man, all those little tiny tweaks they just stack on top of each other. So if you're a studio watching this, like um, it's critical that you keep tweaking, you know, like we're tweaking the debrief and trying to make this a better visual and audio experience. And obviously the content experience better. We're constantly tweaking and like, we didn't start here, but we weren't afraid to start with wherever we were. Mm -hmm. And then we're iterating, iterating, but those, those little iterations can be kind of small things that really add into a much bigger thing. And that's, fun for me to watch as the studio continues to grow. It's like, man, there are a thousand little tiny yep. details that we've worked out that when a client comes now, we already have potentially a solution already in place for that. So way to go team for being willing to, to crank and grow on all of that. And you should see the backlog on our to-do list. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Right. There's no, no shortage. No, no. Oh, things. you're done. Well, just go right. another list. Hey, uh, John, we've talked a lot about uh, the whole process, the day of, right? Filming and everything. Uh, I just wanted to quickly touch base on your experience with us working on post. Yeah. Um, so it was a little different than what we do for a lot of our clients. We, You and I actually worked together, and this is the second time mm -hmm. that we've done that. I've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for lunch, by the way. <laughs> that was really good. Um, so what we do is John and I will sit down and we'll go just get a feel for all of them, and we'll just watch through them. And then John and I will kind of hang out and look at different parts that maybe we don't like or maybe could be better. Um, and then we dive back into footage um, and sort of look at that. What, how, how was that process for you? How did that feel? Was, was there any friction at all, John? And then I'll also bring up another point like after you, yeah. after you answer that. So this is the way I work. You asked me a question. I answer the earlier question. Um, the uh, I think one thing, <laughs> I love it. It, it ties not into only working with non-professional <laughs> talent, but also ties into how you guys continually iterate to improve. Right. So uh, you guys manage so many variables so that we can do great work as a team. And it's very collaborative um, with, those, with those two doctors. <laughs> we had a script um, that was just, we just couldn't get it down to it. You know, even getting the stuff out of it. And Jay and Andre came up with a script edit on the fly because we, 
because we could focus on the performance. We could uh, focus on the human interaction. You guys came up with a script. That's what we ended up running. And it was the just the presence of mind and not the clutter of all the detail and all of the machinery going on. You guys could really focus on what we we're trying to do. And you guys had a much better I, version. Yeah, I appreciate that giving me a shout out on that. But I think it was Tyler. Was it Tyler? Uh, Tyler. I, I was going to say, I, I actually had <laughs> nothing to do with that. But I'm happy to take ownership for that. But Tyler, I think you were sitting there because Tyler's our word guy. Like he's so good at listening. I mean, there are many different things. But in this scenario, you're you're listening to those words. So talk a little bit about because I, I, I felt you uh, wrestling with it. We we're all wrestling with yeah. it. And I'm like, Tyler, type something up, like come up with your version of it or whatever. So talk a you little know, bit about that. I'm trying to remember what the, the exact words were. Or sure. I can't remember, what, yeah. It's been it's been a few weeks, right? But um, yeah. There's always these times when I'm sitting there going, I, I think it should be this word, uh -huh. but I don't know if I should say something. Right. Want to interfere? But then usually it turns out okay. Um, but but yeah, a lot of times when people are writing, um, you know, the people that they're the talent, they know what they want to say, but and, when, and they're used to saying it in a certain way, but it doesn't work on camera, right? And so um, somehow these words just kind of pop into my mind. I don't know how it works, so I can't really explain it. <laughs> yeah, but there's but um, you're sensitive to the feeling like there's something. Right. Yeah. It's like an intuition. Right. So just like even though you don't know how it works, pretend like you had to describe how it works. What would you say about like what's happening internally? There's some conflict happening where your brain's going like this is not working. And here's what needs to happen. Just generically talk about that. Just a lot of times it's an emotion where, where when you use a certain word, it gives a, um, almost like a cold feeling. But if you said it, well, a lot of times it's long words. So people are using long words and I go, well, what if you just said about instead of some word <laughs> right. or if what you said, if instead of three, three syllable words, and it, and it makes it feel more, uh, C.S. Lewis talks a lot about this in, in talking about writing. He said, if you can use shorter words and say the same thing, just use shorter words. Mm. And especially in video, man, people do not have time for, um, to listen to long words and, and man, dependent clauses are terrible. Mm. When you go to do this thing, you know, you make this uh, clause at the very beginning and then you've got to remember it through the whole sentence. It, it never works very well. So these things just kind of pop into mind and I'm very grateful when, when people are open to that. Um, and it's a collaborative thing. And it's also good for, if I say, Hey, what if you said this? And they say, no, that doesn't <laughs> work. Cause I don't always know exactly right. what the, the, the tone is, but right. sometimes it helps. It's mostly about using shorter words and, and the emotion can, sometimes it can feel kind of cold. Uh, and if you use, if you use different words, it can make it feel a little more personal and warm, especially in this setting mm -hmm. where you're really trying to reach people directly from, yeah. uh, from an emotional point of view. And these, these, uh, aren't people that always have a chance to be on television, right? So they're like, we got to cram everything in because yeah. we're so passionate and we really want to just spill it all out there. And Tyler's like, or we could remove that. We could remove that. And just kind of line it up together, and then there. And the the main thing is that they're able to deliver it and be happy with what yeah. comes it's a, out. It's a funny thing where their pre work because they were being so prepared, right? They were taking it seriously. They're like, oh, we want to talk about A, B, C, D, right? These are the things we want to talk about, and they've written it out. Mm -hmm. And so then I think that was part of the speed problem. Was like, oh man, they are trying to cram in A, B, C, D, and so it's kind of a funny thing where because of that pre-work, it resulted in a non, uh, not as good of a performance. However, because of that pre-work, we were able to hear and hear. And by we, I'm using the royal we because I mean Tyler. <laughs> Tyler was able to listen to that and go like, mm, I think it's just A and B or what whatever. they're trying to say. Right, right. So you were able to take that bigger amount of things and just constrain it down into like, well, the essence of this is we're good doctors and the banks helped us yeah. or whatever it was. And so we can be doctors and they can be the bank, right? They can be the bank. The, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. We get to be the doctors and they get to be the bank Yeah, and uh, we've helped everybody succeed. It's the magic of Hollywood where Hollywood uh, can take this amazingly complex thing and, and break it down into words where you just think they're making it up on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it just it conveys the same emotion with so, so efficiently, I guess. Mm. I think as far as like the actual dynamic on the set, what was important and the reason I jumped for Andre, because I had Andre in my ear, um, is that Hello. what what Tyler did there is he could see we were we were into the point of 
uh, diminishing returns. Right. Trying to get them to say what we thought they should be saying. We're 100%. trying to use their word. 100%. And they were getting exasperated, as they right. should, right? I mean, when you're into your seventh or eighth take, it's like, I can't say it any faster. And so Tyler having the wherewithal to remove stuff and make it simpler it allowed them not only to get the content across, but also allowed them to just like emotionally reset. Oh, like, nice. yeah. And they got to do it afresh instead of being worn out. Okay, here comes take number seven. Oh my gosh, I've done this how many times? I can't make these people happy to now, hey, try this. And it was more in line with their voice because Tyler had been listening to the way that they were actually talking. Um, it was just a much better, it was a, it was a huge improvement. I do, I, even though I know they're not like the, they're not professional talent or whatever we were talking about, I do want to give them props oh, for yeah. staying in the hole. Yeah. Because yeah. they were, I mean, dude, they were, <laughs> you guys don't know, but when we, we, were, we showed John a version of the edit where John was like, can you make it a little slower? And I was like, man, dude, because it is like, and they were practicing that over and over again. So I do, I do want to give them props. Um, one thing I'll say, um, especially for this one and like a couple of the others, uh, our bread and butter here with making videos and recording all of our ISOs and everything, our system that we built, that's what we do really well. Well, luckily working with John on kind of short takes, um, on this one and having that system set up, that was huge for us because John's like, Hey, do we have a better take? And I'm like, you know what? I went back and I found the best one but why don't I click three times and we can look through all of them. Mm -hmm. So we would sit there and figure out which ones we liked and, and we didn't like the other. So I really like the way that that, um, that workflow helped yep. in this situation. Although looking back on it, there is a couple times where I wish we might've rethought some of the camera angles. That would be my one keeping everything completely honest on the debrief take yeah. would be like, I would really like to go back and, redo some of the angles because with such a flat i mean there was some depth to that background but with such a flat background with a background that doesn't deviate that much when you're switching angles sometimes it can almost feel like nothing changes in the background and all of a sudden i just do this <laughs> and now i'm back to you right here so it feels really weird so there were just a couple of different angles i probably would have either made wider or maybe moved over a little bit more if i could have yeah, I think just to kind of like we've talked about each this one particular section of the day, I think is the section we feel the most like need to think about, like and, and feel how to improve upon because it was a bit frustrating in the moment. Um, and so I think just to kind of summarize all the things that happened. Number one, we're switching to a uh, 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 couch here which I thought this was a time lapse but now it's just a 10 minute video um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just exporting Very the whole video um, so we're just moving the couch um, wow compelling yep. but so we had to switch to this couch and we had to switch a bunch of camera angles we had to switch a bunch of lighting and then while that's happening uh, and we're trying to dial all that in they're trying to do this script which they haven't done before and they well they've done it before but they've practiced but they haven't thought about it being on camera so they're just going faster and faster trying to fit the same amount of information into a smaller and smaller um space and it just kind of that is i think what led to that breaking point of us realizing something's got to change and be different here um i think it's important to kind of see all of that those pieces that led into that i think something that is hard for us to do is I always wish Tyler could just be in the room whenever the like plan is being made because then he could have been like well wait a minute we only need to do A and B you know like we could have intercepted that earlier but you know with such a small team it's like oh man Tyler you're so amazing at these word things now I need you to go put that light in the <laughs> ceiling you know like it's it's like oh man I wish you know sometimes it's hard to get the the resources where they need to be yeah and that does go back to the like taking uh like taking some uh charge if you will i'm lacking on speaking english right now but tyler i feel like you have those thoughts often and sometimes you are a, a bit timid to like kind of like mm -hmm. say it but typically uh, you'll be like well i'm thinking uh can i say this i'm like dude press the stage <laughs> button like talk to them because you all your your insights always good so i will be less timid listening to that <laughs> instinct i love how i'm the one teaching you something look at that beard dude this is backwards <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the catch twenty two of your uh people level of understanding. I just put a mint in my mouth. I'm so sorry. Um <laughs> is so is so strong that that same understanding is like, well, I don't want to offend, like I don't want to hurt their feelings in this moment too. So it's like your sensitivity is both your greatest strength <laughs> and your greatest. Well, you weakness. know, and it's sometimes it's really personal because if people spend a lot of time trying to write a script. 
And then you come and say, well, just say that in three words. They're like, it can feel like, well, good night. I put all this work into it. Mm -hmm. And also it's, it's really, especially for customers like these folks, it's their life that they're talking about, you know, and, and you guys put so much pre-production work. A lot of times folks come in and they haven't done nearly as much pre-production work and thinking about what they're going to say. Um, and, and so sometimes it, it doesn't seem as much, you know, it's like we're adding to it, but, uh, when, when people have really put a lot into it, it, it can, it can, it feels different when you try to, try to say, we'll do it differently. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to be sensitive, Re but I'll be less sensitive from now. That, <laughs> be less sensitive. Is that like you telling it? It's like almost like telling a musician like, Hey, can we rewrite this part of your song? Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, uh, that's not the answer. Uh, but okay. Yeah, maybe we can. <laughs> I, I do think we need a code word system. Uh, we've been talking a little you, bit about you, this. You mentioned this I've, often. I mentioned this often because yeah. I keep feeling it. And it's like, we just need a set of code words with zero to 10. And it tells you, here's the problem I'm feeling. Here's how much I'm feeling the problem. Because mm -hmm. Tyler, you often will be like, I feel like it's just not level, you know, on the, on the background or whatever. You'll be noticing it. And it's like, well, if you could just say like, you know, I'm feeling like a banana four, you know, and like we all know what that means and everybody else is just confused, you know. Or like if we're going to rewrite, if we're going to rewrite somebody's script, I'll be like, hey, we need to do the John Wagner. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That's right. There you go. JW. <laughs> the JW. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling the JW three on this one. Yeah. No, I'm feeling a JW eight. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's to hear you. you know, but it's a ways to communicate no, I agree. some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we, maybe that could be an episode of the debrief. We yeah, nice. We'll code words. With the code we words. leap them maybe every we do time. It live. Well, yeah. and, and a lot of times we'll have thoughts that we need to share with each other because we'll think something, but the, you know, sometimes the client's standing right there and you don't want to say, Hey, I think this is wrong. And, right. and until you've consulted with somebody about it, um, and so I, I think that's a really, really good idea. So have a way to to communicate without just. Bleh, well, we've often out there. we've often talked about having that one voice. Who's yeah. in charge? Who is directing? In this case, it's you, John. You're you're yeah, in right. charge. So we need to have the ability to kind of communicate with us, and then come to you and say. Um, you know, I watch The West Wing a lot. I don't know why that show, I like it, but I do. And it's like every time they talk to the president, it's like everybody's had like their six meetings so they can come and be like, here's what we need to do. Here's why we need to do it. And here's what, you know, like the, here's the three th sentences that explain the whole situation. And then you either got to no or you got to yes. And that's it. You know, it's the whole conversation. And so sometimes I feel like we just need to go to people and be like, here's what's happening. Here's how we can fix it. What do you think? John, can you've taught, you've been on uh, film production sets and stuff like that. The, the concept of there being one voice that talks to the talent, uh, one director. Um, Andre and I have done a good bit of that stuff. And that's kind of a basic principle of like, n everybody's not trying to throw all the input at the talent or uh, at the same time. And there's one, like if you have a problem, go to this one person. And we try to designate that when we're doing a production, or at least, I don't know if we always do it formally, but there's that principle. Can, can, have you seen that right in the real world out there? Oh yeah, I think it's, um... So you have a lot of, um, got a lot of experts, right? Everybody's running a department. Uh, you've got your head of camera, you've got your head of lighting, you've got your head of, um, props, you've got your, um, all those heads and they all have very smart things and they're looking at it from a very specific perspective. And so someone, um, may be telling the talent, you've got to move closer to the light, you you just have to always empathize with who's like doing the performance and how many voices are they getting and which voice should they pay attention to, especially if they're not getting stuff that's been harmonized yet. Right. Or, uh, and so th I think that's why as far as like good set management is having one person talking to the talent. There's a time um, in preparation uh, when you can have uh, collaborative meetings. I think that's very good. But when you're actually rolling, I think it's very important to have one voice going to the talent and, um, I think it's a kindness to them. Yeah. It also puts responsibility where responsibilities do. If your director is not making good decisions, then that uh, leads you to other choices you make on your next production. Mm. But that, but that director should be the one who's got the whole picture. Like, okay, I hear your need about, you know, I think they're not saying this right, but you're knowing where they're going in the next scene or the right. next setup, and right. you're keeping continuity. Right. Um, especially if you're shooting out of continuity, which, you know, that's really tough. Mm. A lot of us on the lower budget stuff, we shoot in continuity. Right. You know, scene 100 goes into scene 200. Right. Um, but every once in a while, you got to shoot scene 700 at the beginning. Yeah. And so having someone right. who's got that continuity in place and responsible for it, I think is important. Yeah, like making sure that you're wearing the same shirt in the debrief as you were on the day of filming <laughs> that's the continuity that's we the work continuity. with around here well and i think what's interesting about the one voice it's funny like i am not a sports ball guy um i try really hard to be but 
but my youngest son, Max, he's super into soccer. And so we've been going to these, uh, we've been going to these soccer games and these soccer games, um, <laughs> have, uh, all the parents yelling at the kids awesome. to tell them all the things to do. But the coach is also yelling commands. And I found myself feeling like the coach is the director. Yep. And I found myself kind of telling my wife, like, Shh, hold on, you're distracting Max. The yep. coach is trying to tell him something. And, Cause I'm so sensitive to that idea of like, let the voice be the one voice yeah. uh, because we've all, it all comes from good intentions, but mm. uh, two things can happen when everybody's trying to direct the talent. Mm -hmm. First of all, conflicting opinions can happen and that's difficult. Now the talent has to resolve which yeah. one of those to yeah. do. So that's not good. But also I think bigger than that, it's like, who do I please here? Yeah. You know, and there's no understanding of like, who do I get my direction from? So similarly in the, in the control room, while you're the single voice to the talent, we are collectively communicating. And then we have, and it sounds like it was me in this case, a single voice that's talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So similarly, we're also not saying, uh, Tyler talk, uh, Andre talk, Tyler, you know, everybody talk down to John's IFB. Instead, we're saying like, nope, this is the person that communicates with the director in yeah. this case. So it's all about single voices because it it's all about collecting all the input, mm -hmm. synthesizing though, and timely deciding yeah. when to choose. So like in this case, and it's not always the same person on our team that's doing that, but in this case it was me and I'm synthesizing all the the thoughts that's in right. here and some of them I'm definitely pushing on to to you and some of them I'm not. I'm yeah. making the executive decision that that's actually not going to be helpful yeah. because I feel like I have a different understanding that lets me uh make that make that call. Yeah. So that's all about being a director is making all those calls in the yeah, moment of that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. It's not about control. It's about clarity. Mm. And so um, I think, oh, you know, a great quote. Wow. It's not about control. It's about wow. clarity. Whoa. Oh, that's but, uh, a good one. <laughs> but I think the thing about it is, is that like um, one of my mentors, uh, Phil Downer, said, you know, it, when he's he's a type A off the charts, high D guy. And but he when he we're driving together, he goes, if you see something and we're, we're running into danger. You tell me, cause we're all going to die together. You know, a lot of dads mm. and type a guys, he's a Marine machine gunner, right? He's like, don't tell me how to drive. Don't tell me how to direct a commercial. Wow. Don't tell me how to write a script. It's like, no, if you see something, you need to tell me wow. because we're all going to die together. And if oh. you don't, if you don't get that great idea and that great, you're watching the lighting. I'm working on the performance right now. If you see something on the lighting that I'm missing now, right. cause I'm so down the funnel on this thing and you don't tell me, then that's going to hurt all of us. Cause oh. what we'll do is we'll end up in post and go, Oh, that was the great take. But if you notice the key lights in the frame or, or they've got eyeshadow or whatever's going on. So we all have to work together. But if that influ, if that all those to Andre's point, if all that's going directly to the talent, then the talent gets confused right. mm -hmm. and, and the performance suffers. So I think having that, that clarity and then someone, Andre here on the shoot day, he's making the decision of what's really actionable, like in the context of what's important and not important. Cause sometimes getting them to shift a little bit in their chair, but making them do a third or fourth take isn't really worth, isn't really worth it. They're already tired. You know, they're already kind of worn out on the process. Whereas if you see something that's going to technically break the show, then that's got to get through. Hmm. I, I love that. I, I wanted to say also, um, what's interesting is I'm, everyone would say I'm very particular, right? I'm very, I'm very, yeah, everyone nervously laughs. laughs. Um, so I'm really particular. I'm, uh, on the ultimate side, I'm looking for every hair, right? So I'm being very particular. It is funny though. Sometimes I'll be so dialed in on that particularity that I'll miss the like, yeah, but the shots framed wrong or something like, so it's really, and I'll look at it and like, kind of like, oh, right. I'm looking at the whole shot. I've been focused on, I have this one little problem area of their shoulder keying correctly or something like that. So it's kind of a funny thing where you have to be able to have others that are, you know, supporting you and being able to communicate that it's that whole thing of, like you said, the light in the shot. It's like, all right, there's still a light in the shot, but I got the key looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so all of that matters together. Well, so one, one last thing that I had was just from a, w what is it like 
uh, to work with us. So like we're a team, which is a little different. Like not every studio has a full-time team, right? So a lot of studios are more like, here's the box and here's one or two people. Uh, and then the rest is like contractor, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. And odds are very much in favor that that's the way, if you're watching this, that you work. Uh, I've made a decision to like invest in a team and just do it that way. That's just the path I've decided to take. What, what has that, how does that, I always wonder like, how does that feel to the outsider? So for you coming in, uh, are there advantages or disadvantages either way? You can please speak candidly about it, but love to hear just like as, so you have the relationship with a client, you're bringing them in, but then there's all of us. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like you're inviting your best friend to come to a different house for a party. Yeah. And so what's, what's that like? Um, cause we can't really experience that firsthand. Oh, um, it's all back to trust, right? I mean, uh, you guys have a team. You've collected the top talent in the marketplace, in the region, and you uh, are experts at what you do. So you guys perform at a very high level of trust. Um, you know, it's like a it's like a special forces team. Hmm. Um, so you guys know everybody. Everybody on this team can run a show, but you all have special departments that you're the head of. So I think that's important. Um, so I think I come in here with a great deal of confidence. Not only am I going to get great production, ultimately that's what we're getting paid for is final stuff that will air and produce new customers for our clients. But the process is going to be a way that I am not only going to have confidence to bring non-professional or semi-professional clients or talent or brands into, and they're going to have a great experience here and they're going to be cared for and actually enjoy it. But, uh, but that we're going to do great work when you manage all the variables that you guys manage and you make sure that it feels great and that you honor the people, then, um, this is the best place to work. You know, it's ultimately about the people. It's not about the gear. The gear is great, but in 20 years, there'll be a different right. uh, shooting methodology. Right. You know, if we're even shooting for right. 20 years, <laughs> yeah. I think we will be. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the, the point is what really matters is how you honor people and get the best out of people. And you guys are, I don't think there's anybody in around here that's as good at that as you are. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, man. Well, it's a, it's a thing of like, we try to treat this almost like our home and it's like inviting people into our home and we want them to feel that level of hospitality. And, and we're trying to, we're like your ambassador, you know, when, when we have a client that's an agency coming in. So it's been just an honor to work with may create. It's been an honor to work specifically with you, John. And uh, I feel like this shoot, is fun because it was this mixture of uh, all the different layers. I mean, I guess kind of as I've heard this whole conversation, it's all about how do we uh, funnel up somebody typed in the chat while we're, you know, we're, we're texting each other while we're having these conversations, any back channel what? stuff. <laughs> you didn't get that. Like my kids. <laughs> I can't believe you said that, John. Yeah, exactly. Just no, no. Uh, but somebody's like saying it's like military command, you know? So it's like the idea of these hierarchies of structures where, um, and they're kind of self-formed, like some of them we've had very direct conversations about, but other things just happen kind of organically where it just naturally kind of lends itself to uh, a river that slowly, you know, it's kind of a bigger tributary and kind of pushing into this river to spit out of the other side of that into the ocean, the, the product. And so it's just so cool to work with each of you here. I'm so proud to work with you and John so proud to work with you and may create. It's been a real honor to do this. It's Thanks. cool to have you come back. I think that speaks a lot to us and hopefully that speaks a lot to you guys. What like both of us are winning when that happens. Cause oh. that means the cut, the client ultimately is saying this is, this is a solution that worked really well. So Andre, I wanted to throw something in there. You have talked a lot about, um, hey, guy, uh, Andre, how's it going? Yeah. You've talked a lot about over time of like somebody noticing something and then not saying it. Like yeah. you've said, please do not do that to me. Yeah. That is not fair to notice something and then be like, oh, well, uh, you know, I would have said something because uh, I, I don't know if that's it's not really happened. But but there have been times when I've noticed something and I thought, well, I don't want to. But then I'm. I kind of speak up rather than being timid because it's like saying, well, I don't really care enough about you to say, yeah, fix it or to, to yeah. point that out, you know? Well, yeah, right. The question is what is care? So is care, we, we should be recording this. I'm, this is I almost never, like, I a, never hit stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks this for is, rejoining this is the bonus material. Bonus material. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. What is care? So I think for me, care is if I care about you, I'm going to protect you. And, uh, I'm also going in part of protecting you is maybe pointing out a flaw. Mm, right. Right. And, and I think we live in a time where flaws, it's, it's more like you should just accept me as I am. And I, and I, I don't think that's necessarily wrong, uh, but at the same time we can all grow and become more. And so, um, yeah, it's doing the whole team a disservice to not say it. And I think the challenge is how do we do that in a way that's not a critical spirit? That's not one that's just like being a punk and a know-it-all of like, (laughs) I knew that was ugly. I don't know why you guys even did that. Right. So I think a lot of that comes down to attitude and we as a team all have to work on a, a spirit always every day for forever. Uh, it's not cause we're failing. We just always have to work on this as human beings being humble enough to be able to accept like, yeah, that isn't great. Let's That's a fix hard that part. It, it, is it hard. plays to your insecurities. Yeah. Most of the time it's like, you know what I'm realizing? Oh, the only reason I feel upset that somebody said that is cause I'm insecure. I feel that insecurity and you have to kind of, as you've said in the past, leave that at the door. You know, we used to talk about the idea of unfiltered feedback and yeah. when we would have the production meetings, um, for films and stuff. And we would say, okay, all right, everybody, it's unfiltered feedback time. We're going to turn off the filter in this environment. It's safe to say whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I, so I think that's as much as anything is creating an environment where it's safe to say, Hey, that thing doesn't look right without people going, Oh, I'm going to get to that, you know, or getting, getting all blown up about it. So, right. And there's a time and place for it. Right. right. So like when we're first setting up the shot, <laughs> It's like, we haven't even turned on the lights yet, you know, and and if we're critiquing that, right. So there would be a place for that. So sometimes people can be over eager in their critique and it's like, well, wait a second, let it, let us at least get that in there. Um, and, and so, I mean, we've all said to each other at times like, yeah, hang on, hang on. I'm not, not quite ready for that. Right. I can't hear that right now. Yeah. It's like, I'm in the middle of putting the light fixture in the ceiling right now. Let me get back to you after I've done that. And then we could talk about what does the lighting look like? But another thing you say, uh, and I like this technique is, Hey, I just want to say this out loud to make sure everybody hears this. I'm just saying this out loud. I'm not trying to criticize or anything. And that's great too. Another thing, I remember one time we were in a middle production and everything was crashing or something and you were trying to solve a problem. And I came up to you and said something and you said, I need less feedback right now. <laughs> or I need, <laughs> no, I need less interaction right now. <laughs> and it was like, it was a great way to say, I can't think about that right now. Let me do this. And it was like, oh, I get it. I totally get it. So like, anyway. Well, what's funny, uh, this is just a funny thing. Like I remember when I first went from working uh, for somebody else to working for myself and I'm working at home uh, because I don't have an office yet. And so I'm at home on a computer and that when I'm working, the hardest I've ever worked in my life, typing on a computer looks almost exactly the same as when I'm on a computer looking at Facebook. (laughs) It's hard to sometimes distinguish like is what is happening right now, right? Because so much of what we're doing is up here. It's not so physical. It's not like, well, I'm shoveling the thing or hammering the thing. It's like, I don't know, I'm thinking in terribly intensely in this exact moment to try to solve this complex web of a problem. And so uh, a funny thing is like, sometimes it's unclear how to communicate that I can't handle more. <laughs> and so, yeah. And I think when it comes to the, like, I'm saying this, um, my disclaimer that I say a lot, uh, I've just learned it's very, very, very hard to communicate clearly. Mm. And I've been married for 31 years and shockingly, my wife sometimes will misunderstand me and shockingly, sometimes I'll misunderstand her. And, and I've just learned, you know what? I would rather everyone be a little annoyed that I said the same thing 17 times <laughs> than a whole lot annoyed that they didn't understand what it is that they were expected to do. And so it's like, well, I'd rather err on, but I, my fear always is that f- people feel like I'm insulting their intelligence where it's like, why are you, why are you um, really going down? Like you already told us, you know? So I, I don't, I always am quick to disclaim when I do that because I want everyone to, and my disclaimer, my hope of the disclaimer is what I'm saying is I believe everyone here is here. They're all full of intelligence. They're all full of capacity. They're full of ability. And I'm saying like, Hey, I'm coming into you here (laughs) and I'm here and I'm doing that. I'm going to flicker on my camera. Uh, We're doing that here because I am saying that to say like, uh, 
I'm not devaluing your ability or your understanding. I'm saying just in case, just in case I didn't communicate clearly, give me, give me space to just say this one more time, even though you guys are already all here, just in case I'm going to come in here and that has saved me more than it's cost me. Mm. And so thanks everyone for being patient with me as I maybe tell you the same thing that I've already done. If you encountered stuff like that in your, you know, in the world, you guys do a lot of collaborative intense work i guess in right. different times and do you guys have to make sure everybody has a, 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 a what is it freedom to say hey wait a minute that should be blue or that's that's just off center a little bit or whatever oh yeah oh yeah and i think working with them um, like creative development we talk um there there's the ideation stage where you know everything is everything's on the table and then as you get closer down the production timeline decisions are being made now and it's no longer it's no longer back to this stage where everything's on the table you've made decisions and now you're working towards that as you get there uh, i'm a big uh i'm a challenger by nature and so i like to challenge assumptions i don't i don't like um part of being a creative is that you will solve yesterday's problem three new ways today right you'll just keep solving the problem yeah the problem with that is that you never end up producing and delivering anything mm. so you have to have the balance between when's the right time to get the input and at what level is the input if you're way down here and you're saying let's just reevaluate if this thing's even right or not um then probably something in your process wasn't working if mm. you're fine-tuning if there's things that are broken or there's new information or there's a change in context then that's important to bring in at that point. But most of what we do when we produce creative, commercial creative, ads, TV, radio, it has to be delivered on time and in a certain format and to a specific budget. And there's just not a lot of, you just don't get to reinvent the wheel at this part. Hey, speaking of reinventing the wheel, we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. There are so many things that Socially You has done that we just don't have time to make videos and talk about. Little tiny details that just take your production to the next level. So if you're looking to take your studio and kind of elevate what you're doing and you like what Socially You is up to, we would love to talk to you. Just go to sociallyyou.com and click on the studio consulting. From there, you can fill out a quick form and one of us will reach back out to you. I cannot wait to meet you and hear more about your project.